Hi, I'm Jolene, and we are on Single in Seattle, and I'm with Wendy Newman, who is the author of 121, one, I'm sorry, 121 First Dates, and uh, she's going to help us through. Help us, will you? I will. But first, tell us um, why you created this. Well, at the age of 43, Jolene, I went on the worst date of my life, and I didn't know it at the time, but it was date number 54. I didn't know it. <laughs> Google Calendar knew it. And it had to be recorded. And so I started writing out dates so I could really look to see for myself where I was blowing it, where they were blowing it, where we had victories, where we could do better, like that. So it was just at date 54 where you decided to start evaluating? Right. And when the number 54 started, <laughs> it, it didn't start number one at age 15. I had started one through 101 after the end of a long-term marriage. So when I was 35 years old, my husband and I split up, and the first date I had after that was date number one, okay. after a long-term marriage ended. And then, from then on, give us a quick timeline. Yeah, timeline is one through seven took seven years, because I did that thing that a lot of women do, which in the one through seven, there were two of them that were really cute, and... <laughs> totally charming and I didn't really like being single and they both had big deal breakers but I didn't want to be alone I didn't want to be alone and I knew from the very first day that it wasn't going to work out but I just stuck around for way too long because I didn't want to be single yeah <laughs> that's that sad in combination of a you know lower confidence I yeah. yeah yeah okay so then you had one through seven got it in seven years and then Eight through 121 happened in three years, and that's when I got serious. I needed to really date, like really look to see who is he and who am I, and do we have compatibility for the long haul? And are you cute was important, but there was more. Okay, question. Yeah. On date number eight, do you have a set of um, a goal like, hey, I'm going to date X amount, or I'm going to try and find, or I'm going to see what's out there? And this random person, that random person, because I don't really know what I like yet. I mean, what was your strategy with um, starting with date eight? Date eight, I didn't come with a full plan at that point, but I did know that I really started needed to really started to look to see if I could find particular things in a man, things that I needed that I didn't have in my marriage, and then I took the things from my marriage that I really liked that I wanted to repeat, like a real sense of freedom. I had such freedom my whole life and I couldn't imagine being with someone where I felt I wasn't free in mm -hmm. my relationship so that was really important to me and the ability to really spread my wings and do anything I want and create and travel and not every person wants their partner to do that so I said there were certain things I had to look at can I be myself will I be able to have a sense of freedom will I be able to feel safe in a way that's really yummy with this person lots of different things to look at but in terms of uh, strategy, did you, at, at 8, 15, did you have, I should date X amount? Oh, I didn't mean to do it, but what happened was... <laughs> but you did it anyway. <laughs> I did it anyway. <laughs> it was, I knew I needed to get going. I needed to get on it. And so I had 27 first dates within a three-month period. And then there were also second and third dates all in that three months on top of that. It was a really busy summer. And so that actually had me get on a roll and it turned dating drudgery into this sort of magical moment where I got to meet a new person and be excited and it shifted everything because before that law and order rerun sounded better. <laughs> My dog is really good company and right. so am I. So let's go back to drudgery to magical because I've been talking to this last week a number of women and women entrepreneurs where it's like yeah, I'd rather, you know, just be at home, read a yeah. book. So how did you make that leap from drudgery and <laughs> to <gasps> magical? Well, really just making myself put all those dates on the books. And kind of like getting on a bicycle when you get on a bicycle and you're starting to ride long distances. It hurts your butt, you know. But once you get on and you ride for a while and a couple weeks go by, you get good in that saddle and it doesn't hurt anymore. It doesn't. It's fine. So then so you, you, you just you gotta get yourself, on that horse. You made yeah. yourself get there. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, this isn't so bad. Yeah. And I went from, is this guy gonna waste my time? To, wow, I'm excited. Who is this guy? What do I get to learn about this guy? 
How did you make that shift? What are things you told yourself or what kind of, because I think that's where a lot of women are. Yeah. A lot of times we think that dating should be fun and it would be great if it's fun and it's awesome when it is fun. But how I got myself there is I kept remembering the end game. Okay. I'm a great partner. I am the prize. Yeah, I am the prize. I'm a great okay. partner and I'm going to just wait it out until I'm just going to know at the other end of this, it's going to be all worth it. While dating isn't always a great time, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, the other end of it will make it worth it. And it did. Now, in terms of your book, can you share with us what's one, one big mistake that women make? Because we don't make very many. No. So just it's, no. it's probably hard to think of one, but... Yeah, it's mostly men who make all the mistakes. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. One mistake that we make is we buy into all the rules, and we know that we're going to go about this as a strategy, the dating strategy. What's the best dating strategy that we can come up with to win? Yeah. Right? Totally. <laughs> I want to win. I want to win. What are the benchmarks? And, and I know we're getting there. Can and, I measure it on my Fitbit? And you yeah. know that you can go buy books that will give you rules to help you have the right strategy to win. Yes. Like back in the 90s, there was the rules and they had in that book, you had to wait three dates before being intimate. Okay. It was a three day rule. But then somewhere in the late 90s, they updated it to a 30 day rule. And then Steve Harvey had a dating book that has a 90-day rule. Like, what rule is the right rule? And there's all these rules like you can't reach out to him and you shouldn't be the first one to talk or you'll lose your power and don't do this and try that instead. And it's, it's all strategy. And the problem is, is it takes us further away from our authenticity. When we strategize, it's not us. We're literally manipulating ourselves to be different than who we really are. And basically, we come across as strategic, ma manipulative, and fake. It is not sexy. The two most sexiest qualities in a woman is authenticity and a sense of self. And our self-confidence is gone when we're following somebody else's rule out of a book. So I'm sort of the anti-rules girl. Makes sense. Yeah. I might be all right at this then. If, yeah. if that is true. <laughs> <laughs> Follow my rule and find out. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So after you finish this, and this you just finished this. Yeah. Like. It just came out January 12th. Yeah. How did you feel? Oh, such a relief. Yeah. It's such a relief. And what is your goal with this? I want it to reach as many women as possible because I am like the guide. I'm the hiking guide. Mm -hmm. I've been on this trail 121 times. I know all the easy paths. I know all the beautiful paths, the things you don't want to miss, the things that you you can do it. I'm not going to tell you not to do it, but if you do it, I'm going to show you the low-hanging branches that are going to flick you in the forehead over and over so you just know what you're stepping into, okay. right? I am, in fact, the no-judgment zone. You should go everywhere you want to go, and I'm here to let you know how it's going to how it, it might affect you and what to watch out for. And also, a lot of times women think that they have this experience that they're doing it wrong or they're dating alone or it's harder for them or that was a, the most horrendous date I should stop. And this companion piece will be your best friend to let you know that, yeah, it can suck out there <laughs> and it can be not pretty and you will feel like you can commiserate with a friend. Well, so, so I'm on this date. Hold on, just just a moment. Let me just reference this. <laughs> <laughs> or like, hey, what does it mean? When... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so why do you care? You have your man now. Yeah. Why do you care about the rest of us? Because I know so many women who are struggling, and, and I want them to have a buddy. One of the things that I had in my dating that really made a big difference for me was I had three different friends. None of them lived in my town, by the way. They were all long distance, but they were three dating buddies that I could count on and that they could count on me and that we could witness each other's lives, the good, the bad, the ugly, and help each other through. And for people who don't have that, I can be that for them. And you're saying you have three other um, ladies that you talked about your, your dating stories and 
Two women and one man. Okay. All single. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, 121 first dates. I am pretty excited to jump in this into this and keep it as a reference point.